this time on Bondi Rescue. A wayward child. What's his name? Chicago. Isn't the only thing this father can't find. We couldn't even find the car. And after hours drowning. Just get back. Raises questions for lifeguards. We'll have a bit of a debrief to work out exactly what happened and, and, and work all that out. 6.45, pack up time and final warnings are issued. The lifeguard service is packing up and going home for the day. They close to shore all the time. There is a bit of a dangerous current here. Up there and the flags have come down, so you are now swimming at your own risk. We do recommend that you jump out of the water. We're here for 13 hours a day. We pack up at 7 p.m. We warn all the public that we're finishing for the day. We'll be back at 6 a.m. Please be careful. At the end of the day, we can't be here 24 seven and the general public need to take responsibility for their own actions and if they're gonna stay and, and be in the water. 7 p.m. and it's still 27 degrees. Get out people, you're done, leave, yeah. go, home. go home, go to your family. Before we go home, we assess the beach. If we need to do overtime and hang around, we will. Tonight, it's like a pond. There's a small rip in the south corner, but that's about it. So we're heading home tonight. We finish and hopefully no one goes swimming after that. But, yeah. At 7.15, the lifeguards finally go home. Then... Just 20 minutes later. People take that risk and I wish they wouldn't do that. The men were rescued by members of the public, but one man remains unconscious. He's not breathing and doesn't have a pulse. Just get back. Off-duty lifeguards saw the commotion. Mate, I was just after work swimming at Bronnie and just seeing the helicopter flying around Bondi, so I raced over and um, Sure enough, there was a resuscitation in progress in the south corner. Even if I was off duty, I still help people. It's one life, there is no price for that. Paramedics resuscitate the man using a defibrillator. I got a look at him as they were walking up the, the beach, and he wasn't looking real good at that stage. He has a pulse and is breathing, but remains unconscious. It's unclear how long he was underwater. We put such a big effort in for those 13 hours of the day to make sure everyone goes home safe. And when you hear of something happening after hours, it's, uh, it can be devastating. A day later, and the man remains in hospital in a coma. Head lifeguard Hoppo believes inexperience led to the tragedy. On pack up that night, there was only one small uh, rip down south where Mario had did the rescue during the day. The rest of the beach was quite calm and flat. So what I think happened was the three walked into uh, where that small rip was and then eventually couldn't stand up and started panicking. After last night's tragedy, Mario isn't taking any chances with Backpacker's rip. Hey, got over there, close to shore. The tragedy weighs heavily on Mario, the last lifeguard to leave the beach before the drowning occurred. It's so important, that's why we get so sometimes angry, you know, like with some people that, that don't want listening to us. Because it happened like in a blink of your eyes, it's like people can lose their life, you know, and then, yeah. My mission today is stop everyone down there. Why? Because it's drunk. You don't get yourself in like this hyper vigilant state over that. Like, like how many people swam down there yesterday? Yeah. You know, thousands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did a good job. Yeah. I felt very sad, very, yeah, upset. Face on Bondi, first-year lifeguard Sam is learning the ropes. It's not just rescues 
that are testing his skills. Is he wearing goggles or no? No. No, no goggles. What's his name? So Sopharit. So Sopharit? So yeah. This man from Cambodia has lost his 10-year-old son, Saparath. Do you just want to say his name? Uh, so far up. So far up. When lost children are last seen in the water, alarm bells ring for lifeguards. You don't know how well he can swim. So if he has gone in the water and there is, is such a crowd, it's easy to lose someone like that. Number one, we have a missing child, a little Cambodian boy. Um, he's been missing since he was six months old. There's thousands of people down here, so it's pretty hard to spot him, that's for sure. We'll try English and Cambodian. English is much better. Much better? Yeah. All right. He had really bad English. My Cambodian's terrible, so, you know, it was really hard to communicate with him. So, Pardon, we have your father here. If you have been swimming and you've lost your dad, we have found him. Sam is in his first year at Bondi. He focuses on the water. But experienced lifeguard Jules thinks otherwise. I just thought, well, 100%, my gut feeling is this kid is not in the water. They're just lost on land. We've been driving around for 15 or 20 minutes, and he decides to let me know in casual conversation that his wife is also down here, and he does have a car. Where's your car? Yeah, around there. Yeah. Straight away, I'm thinking, well, a kid's first instinct is either go back to the car or find mum. So, I think we need to try and find the car. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be fine down here. And I thought, this is going to be super easy. Go find the car, locate mum, child, done. So maybe you park on this side of the cafe? Yeah. Maybe? We couldn't even find the car. The case of the lost kid is becoming the case of the lost dad. Or did you park near a children playground? Like near the park here? And we'll walk this way. Yeah, the language barrier was unbelievable. I mean, we get that. That's like, that's not a rare case down here. Did you walk down a lot of stairs to get to the beach? Yeah, I, a lot of down, stairs. Uh, that's there. I just did a whole lot of hand moving, backpack walking. I came from here. Yeah. And you walk this way. Okay. Yes. Okay. So I remember. Okay, yeah. We'll walk this way. Jules thinks the boy may be back with the family car. If only Dad knew where he parked it. I will walk with you and look at every single vehicle. Yes. This one? Yeah. Where's Where's your wife? <laughs> Maybe he changed the car. Are you, are you sure this is your oh, car? Oh, my, my, my wife changed the car. Finally, the car is found. But it's empty. This your car? Then, this, a familiar this. face. And I'm thinking, well, this is great. We've, we've found your car, we've found your wife. Where's the kid? And then next second... <laughs> the kid just kind of pops out from behind mum and, and steps in front. And, you know, I was wondering why mum looked so cool, calm and collect and was looking at dad kind of funny. The kid was with her. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> he, he disappeared before telling me. Yeah. yeah. He needs to work on really knowing where his belongings are. A week earlier. Mario attended a drowning which took place after lifeguards had gone home. A 21-year-old Chinese backpacker was resuscitated and taken to hospital in a critical condition. He has been in a coma since. Today, news of the man's condition has been relayed to the tower. So how is he going? He's been in a coma for about a week and they're flying him back to China today so he can go be with his family. So I thought I'd let you know. Yeah, it's just as I say, there's a fine line, you know, when you come down the beach and play in the water. Life and death. Um, well, 
That's pretty heavy. Hey. Yeah. Teddy. Yeah. yeah. Your boys did a good job though. Yeah. Like, uh, oh. You know? Pretty sad. The man isn't expected to survive. Mario was the last lifeguard to leave the beach, just minutes before the man drowned. Yeah, I wish I could help him before, you know, like... It's very sad. Mm. This moment got me, I don't know. I had, I had quite a few, you know, in the years of lifeguarding. I don't know why, it's just so close, you know, like, it's very touching. 